The final thing I want to talk about is one very direct application of these syntactic structures, just to give you a little bit more intuition about how they might be useful. And that is um, the problem of modeling differences in word order between different languages, specifically for the problem of machine translation. So let's say for, for the sake of argument, we're trying to build a machine translation system which takes Japanese as input and produces English as its output. Now, there's something interesting about these two languages in that English is pretty rigidly, um, English's word order is pretty rigidly subject for verb followed by object. So for example, I can say IBM bought Lotus. This, of course, is the subject. I have a verb and then I have an object. So I have this order, um, by far the most frequent word order in English. On the other hand, if we look at Japanese, it is actually predominantly subject, object, verb. And so this particular sentence would be uh, IBM Lotus bought. Here I have a paraphrase of uh, the Japanese. This is the word order that we would see. If you're going to build a machine translation system, you need to worry about the differences in word order and obviously take the Japanese as input and not only translate each word, but also move those words so they're, that they're in the correct um, order in English. Again, this is a very simple example. And so this might seem like a trivial problem. But things quickly get out of hand when we have lo longer sentences. So here's an example. So the English here is, is sources said that IBM bought Lotus yesterday. And you can sort of see that everything's scrambled and sort of following this kind of word order. So said is now at the end of the sentence. So I have sources, this is the subject. And I have the verb now at the end of the sentence, whereas it was in the second position here in English. And then if I look at this subclause here, that's basically been translated as this paraphrase down here. And notice that the word that is at the start of the phrase in English. It goes to the end in Japanese. Notice again that bought comes in the second position in English, or at least it comes between subject and uh, an object. But it's the, uh, after these two things here. So I have subject, object, verb, and so on and so on. So basically, this kind of reordering has been applied recursively in the sentence. So if you're trying to model differences in word order between these two languages, English and Japanese, it can be quite difficult um, because of the complexities I showed you on the previous slide. But much of that complexity can be reduced if we have syntactic structures. So what I've shown you here is essentially a parse tree um, with the Japanese word order. So sources, yesterday, IBM, Lotus, bought, that, said. So superficially, that looks very, very different from the word order in English. But with these parse structures, you can actually recover the English word order by just rotating a few of these phrases within the tree. So if I identified these three spots, what does that mean? So if I pick up this verb and move it in front of this S bar, so that would be the first thing I would do. Okay, so that's a, a kind of an instance of rotation where we're just swapping the order of these two things. And I can do a similar operation at this node. So I swap the order here, and I pick up this and move this over here. And finally, I do a similar operation here, where I swap the order of these two things and move this over here. If you go through those steps, you actually recover the English word order. So there's a very simple description of differences in word order uh, for this particular example, which just corresponds to rotation at different points in the tree, reflecting the differences in word order between English and Japanese. For example, the fact that we have subject, verb, object in English, and we have subject, object, verb in Japanese.